Robot Programming Part 2 related to simulation and programming of robots translated to the target system. So, as I said before, there is basically no standard robot language for different kind of systems, meaning that ABB Robotics has their own programming languages, Koka their own, Fanuk, Yaskava their own respectively, and so on. So, simulation systems use one of two strategies. Either work with target language during programming, meaning the target's programming language of the robot system we are aiming at to actually run the program or translate to the target language before downloading, meaning that we work in a dedicated programming language for the uh, simulation system and then that is translated to the target system. And robot languages are related to computer programming languages with some extra data types and constructions in most cases. So, and then we have to look at simple cases, just the manipulation that is pretty simple and straightforward. But there are some special applications that require special dedicated instructions to be controlled or to be managed. That could include spot welding, arc welding, or any kind of process that needs some extra dedicated instructions to control the process. And these kind of instructions should be included in the simulation system. And if not, they should be implemented somehow. Most simulation systems allow to um, develop dedicated customized instructions for operations that isn't existing at the time of, of, of uh, performing these kind of simulations. Now, if you look at uh, ABB Robotics uh, robots, uh, we have a language called Rapid, and uh, uh, these are some extracts of how the code can look at. We have some robot targets, which are poses with a naming and some data related to those X, Y, Z, and quaternions for the for the position and for the the orientation of the tool and then uh, we have some procedures with some instructions uh, like this we have a mood join j with a joint interpolation mode we have move l as a linear interpolation mode we have wait time 0 0.3 seconds we have a, a output setting of an uh, output digital output to the value of zero and then value number two to one and so on. So these are just examples of how it can look like. And the general workflow in robotic simulation and programming is typically something like this that we uh, usually create objects and put it into a place to create a robot system which should mimic the real system that we aim for. And uh, usually everything is pre-made and existing in the CAD database. If not, we have to create objects. Uh, but usually we have robot models available. We have all the objects that we are going to manipulate and, and, and handle. And uh, possibly we need to fix the end effectors and some peripherals that, that doesn't exist. End effectors could be fingers to the grippers and similar things. And uh, in some cases we can model it directly in the robot simulator or otherwise we use just a normal traditional CAD system and then import it into the simulator and build up what is ever needed. Then we need to calibrate and check that the system mimics the real system. Usually there are some calibration methods to make sure that things fit as it is, if it is existing. In some cases, we just do something that doesn't exist in the physical world, 
and then we can skip this part of course and then we perform the simulation which is a form of programming the system as it is intended to operate and usually if we have a target system we we'll do some trials in the early on just to check that the calibration seems to be okay and uh, fine-tune it so that uh, all the targets meaning the poses of the robot uh, goes to the right place in the simulation world as it does in the target system and then we continue and work out the whole simulation and finally we can perform a new translate and download to the real system and everything will work as intended now sensors as i mentioned before can also be modeled within a simulation context and uh, operate and we can check how it operates in the real world so to say from the simulation now if we have binary sensors could be like an optical sensor with just uh, detecting uh, along a line uh, or uh, inductive sensor or whatever it's pretty straightforward it could just be a straight line element in the simulator and when it is crossed and uh, generated in collision it will trigger an alarm so to say and uh, it will go uh, one or zero whatever is programmed and uh, managed by the sensor itself but if we have a more complex situation like uh, vision systems or in this case i will show you a uh, scene tracking operation through uh, uh, arc welding it becomes a bit more complex, but it's still possible if it is important, meaning. So in this case, we perform a weaving operation. And um, through the we weaving operation, the um, seam tracking system will detect changes of our current when it is weaving from the left to the right and so forth and from that it can generate where is the middle of the seam and drive the robot throughout the seam tracking operation due on the joint and uh, this behavior will be similar as it would be in the real system and in this kind of kind of complex situation we can also check if there will be any problem with singularities which is likely to occur if we change the orientation this much or joint exceeding situations and so forth so it's pretty pretty um, uh, good tool to be able to do that now of course this is kind of um, thing that we can actually go further with we can actually do a simulation check out and uh, that is it likely that this kind of operation will perform in a controlled manner meaning we have control parameters in this case from matlab controlling the whole sensing operation and driving the robot in a good or a bad performance so this is kind of a, a not so controlled situation so we have an instability and by setting the appropriate control parameters we can actually also simulated performance of a process in this case a sensor following process and check that it is performing according to what we uh, want to achieve and um, then when everything is fine we can actually download the whole software package to the target system and that will operate more or less as intended so it's pretty can be pretty um, impressive results so why offline well sort here we can do a lot of stuff that is not possible you on online you can manage more complex situations doing more uh, go into the details about different processes uh, including sensors and whatever actually we can also validate early in the design process about early fault detection few generate fewer problems when we actually generate and, and run the production in the target system uh, we will get a more evaluated solution and um, we can develop things before we have the equipment meaning we can wait 
to actually buy things, to build things until we know that it will work in this way and we know exactly what to buy. And of course, we can reuse the model in similar situations. So we don't have to do things twice, maybe one time or one and a half time, so to say, depending on how much we can reuse. We can also use simulation for more than programming. We can benchmark, analyze performance, different alternative solutions. This is quite, quite nice feature. We can do log log logistical analysis about deadlocks if we have a material flow situation. But it could also be deadlocks within a quite smaller production system with only a few robots and they are occupying the same buffer at the same time or the same uh, jig or fixture at the same time. We can also change different, uh, check different situation with strange sensor data or malfaction of uh, equipment to see what will happen and hardware in the loop testing and so forth. And of course, I mean, the reuse of code and information is a key to be more efficient, especially if we have similar objects, similar processes or control parameters, similar logical events. And then we can verify program function reduced on the transition time between products. So what you can think about is, can programs generated in one system, for example, a simulator or robot system, be uploaded to the other system? Of course, we can always go from the simulator to the target system, which is the robot. That is the purpose of it, so to say. But in some cases, it could be in, of interest to actually go the other way around so that we have a, a fairly good representation of the system in a simulator at the target system, meaning the robot. And if we do some uh, online tuning changes, whatever, at the robot side to be able to upload things, it's not it's not that easy always, but if it is the same, I mean, take Robo Studio for for example, that can be actually connected uh, online between the simulator and the robot, the target system. But if it's not like that, so it's just a, another type of simulator that is not connected uh, online in real time then we have to have a way to convey data from the robot system up to the simulator. Depending on what it is, how important it is, it can be managed, but it's not always that easy. Okay, thanks.